Monday matinees begin right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Rise. The rise. The rise. King Hussein, it pleases me immensely you've traveled all this way to meet me here in New Eden. The pleasure is mine, King Osiris. Our respective countries have been allies for generations. You know my government has never made secret its pro-Western policies. I must compliment you on this castle. It is perhaps... The most beautiful castle I have ever seen. Grand, but not gaudy. I am truly impressed. Your flattery will get you everywhere, King Hussein. I wonder if your sentiment extends to being greater allies to prevent another world war. (laughs) My goodness. I heard you were a blunt man, but I am unsure what to make of this. Another world war? Please enlighten me. You are here because you can rally the Middle Eastern countries against the greatest threat this world has ever known. I think you know exactly who I'm talking about. Asylus, you flatter me to think I can swing the opinions of other world states. As you know, countries in my region have never been united on anything for thousands of years. Oh, but I disagree. Middle Eastern countries are greatly united against Western influence. Hatred has boiled over in your part of the world against Britain, Russia, and the former United States for as long as anyone can remember. But you, you've been an even greater influencing force in your region than those before you. People respect you, love you, and will follow your lead if you believe strongly in a cause. I need you to consider getting behind this cause, Hussein. And what cause is that? I need the Middle East to unite with America in a war against England, Europe, and Russia. Once you announce your support for America, others will follow, including Israel. Then, China will join us as well. Asylus, I know you are an ambitious man. The world hears you loud and clear. We know you mean business. But the war with England, Russia, and Europe? You think far more of Middle Eastern countries than you should. Do I now? Perhaps just Middle Eastern countries alone won't do it. But our alliances will bring in China, and that will seal the deal. We will crush them all. Suppose I do this and support you. I am only a constitutional monarch. I cannot wield my will on my country or anyone else's like you can. I am not going to mince my words. You are a king. Act like it. Otherwise, don't call yourself a king. You have ways to make it happen. Once you do, I promise you my loyalty until my dying breath. And as a reward for your loyalty to me and America, you will become an absolute ruler. Not only of your country, but your entire region. I see. And what's in it for China? China has no interest in ruling the world. But they do want to be equals. And under my rule in Europe and Russia, they will have a larger piece of the pie. (laughs) They're in it for the money. Forgive me, but if they are in it for their money, why side with you? They could side with your enemies. My enemies hide in the shadows. China does not trust them. I am out in the open. They see me. They respect me. 
There are still some people on this earth that respect a man's word. Moreover, my enemies are also their enemies. I understand, King Silas. You will have my full support. Anything you ask of me, I will do my best to make happen. In your heart, you know it is the right thing to do. My Lord Jesus was acknowledged by your Lord, Muhammad. And both of our lords knew who the real enemy was and still is. Indeed, I am with you, Asilus. New Kingdom Radio Theater. The Rise of King Asilus is brought to you by the J.V. Micah Publishing Company, publishers of the Blake's Secret Short Reader Series for Beginner English Learners and the I Want to Learn English textbook. Please visit www.iwtle.com. Countries under the control of the Monster Group began to position themselves in a threatening manner against America. King Silas put his plan into motion that would align America with Middle Eastern countries and eventually China. While keeping the Monster Group focused on his international moves, Silas assigned Minister Arab to continue persecuting Satanists throughout the country. He wanted to disconnect the people from the fog they were in, from the distorting frequencies put in music, television, and every form of media. Capone was assigned to overseeing the secret group of royal cadets called the American Spartans. The most impressive cadet of this elite group was none other than Abigail Sierra. Upon completion of their training, Asilus instructed Capone to initiate their classification as top secret and move them to a black operation base just outside of New Eden. As the world watched in anticipation to see what political moves Asilus was making, his trusted confidence were putting a far more ambitious play into motion one that would move King Silas one step closer to annihilating the monster group altogether. Gentlemen, thank you for meeting on such short notice. Minister Oreb has given me his latest report. I'm pleased more arrests are being made using the poison filter. Joshua, I want you to make sure Oreb is relentless. Execute every demonic seed spreader in all 52 states. Spare no one. Capone, I trust you've been diligent in overseeing our first class of Spartans? I'm actually very proud of this class, sir. You'll be happy to know Abigail Sierra was selected as first captain. She's maturing right on schedule, Your Majesty. Asylus, once we finalize our final phase of the plan, should we initiate the Homeland Defenders Program? When the fog has been lifted from America's citizens, they'll likely be very angry and will want to destroy those that have robbed them of their sanctity. At the very least, they'll be bloodthirsty. When people wake up from their fog, they'll certainly want retribution for those that defiled them for so many generations. And we'll give them that chance. For your next wave of cleansing, make multiple detention camps and dot them across the country. Satanists are cowards without their leaders and their groups. Make sure they are detained in single units. Do not let them congregate. When the fog is lifted, we'll let the militia extremists hunt them like game. There's a lot of land in the Southwest for that sort of thing. What can we do in the more densely populated areas, like New York? Perhaps in large cities we could use the stadiums and arenas as enclosed parks, like they have for paintball and laser tag matches. Only with these, 
you get to shoot Satanists with live ammo. I remember when I was Chancellor of New York City Public Schools, we sometimes would organize major events in the summer at Yankee Stadium in Madison Square Garden. But there are so many large places we could make courses like they do in paintball. I'm just saying, we could do something like that in the large cities for those that have to, you know, get it out of their system. I like the way you think, Capone. But we should limit this to only those people who are most likely to cause upheaval if their bloodthirst is not quenched. We should consider those ideas as a last resort. I'm optimistic the number of people who will want to go after the Satanists will not be so overwhelming that we'll need to occupy multiple arenas for mass executions. One of the beautiful things about this poison filter is it also has a nice feature. It allows Oreb and his team to determine who in the general population is more likely to act on murderous impulses. We could probably use that technology for many other things. Do you think Oreb is willing to lend that poison filter to my team? <laughs> Boy, is this is serious business. And there's this other business we need to finish. The two immortals, Utah and Xanth. Have we found them yet? Yes, we have. Xanth is a woman. She's hiding in plain sight in the Canadian government. My sources found out she's also the Prime Minister's lover. Ew. I think even you wouldn't want to sleep with a billion-year-old woman, Quentin. <laughs> I thought this was serious business. <laughs> you're, you're right. I'm sorry, Quentin. But we're all brothers here, so please continue. The other one, Utah. Turns out he's a monk in Tibet. But my sources say he isn't so celibate either. Apparently he's seeing someone in secret as well. Well, I hope when I reach a hundred billion years old, I'll still want to... Well, you know. Okay, anyway, in all seriousness, we need to prepare ourselves for some very challenging times ahead, my brothers. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm adding another person to our inner circle. In fact, I will be expanding our arms of this Curia Regis. Sir, I'm confused. Did you say Curia Regis? I am establishing two separate but equal houses of lords, each comprised of four lords. You and Capone will now become Lords Jackson and Capone, as well as Oreb and others. I need to allocate powers and responsibilities accordingly as we prepare ourselves for the ultimate objective. Our ultimate objective, sir? I'll explain everything in due time. Just keep yourselves focused on what you are responsible for. If we all stay on task... We'll do what no one else on the face of this earth has ever been able to do. Rule the whole world. 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 King Silas wanted to ensure America was sovereign free of outside and demonic influences and be a nation where no man, woman or child ever went hungry or without shelter. And he established these goals within a relatively few years into his reign. But as he looked closer around the world, he realized the forces that kept his people and nation in the fog for countless generations had done the same throughout the world. The more Silas inquired about the dealings of the monster group, the more he realized their operation was a global disease. What began as a soldier's utopian dream gradually changed over time to a crusade against the enemy of mankind. As Silas took nothing for granted, and called on the so-called Angel Gabriel to help him locate the masterminds of the monster group. Asilas quickly realized Gabriel was no angel, but rather some other unknown entity that was trying to manipulate him into doing things that were beneficial to his troubles. He figured out Gabriel could also be manipulated, and so the two played this charade in order to get what each other wanted and needed. 
Gabriel became one of Asilas' instruments and proved to be quite useful in his ultimate plans. The pieces on the world chess board were being moved into place and the game master, Asilas, was readying himself to make a brilliant and calculated gamble. Witness News, where news comes first. Good evening, America. In the news at this hour, King Hussein of Jordan is wrapping up his two-day visit with King Asalis at the Grand Castle in New Eden. The two monarchs are said to have solidified an alliance in an effort to not only stabilize the Middle East region, but also unify Middle Eastern countries and support America's interests in increasing their military forces in the region by 200%. This announcement prompted a swift response from the leader of China, President Wei, who says this news is of great interest to China and says he wants to meet with King of Silas. King Hussein, I trust you made it back safe and sound. I wanted to congratulate you, Asinus. I must admit, I had some doubts. Of what exactly? You were right. China announced they wanted to meet me before my plane even landed. Let's just say I won't ever doubt you again. Well, I suppose there is much I have to earn from people like yourself before my word can be worth anything. But since we're on the phone, I'm thinking maybe we could move our plans a little ahead of schedule. Convince your generals to move heavy forces at strategic areas around your border. Also, test fire some ballistic missiles and publicly state you are only doing drills. And just for the record, my country's credit is good with yours, right? I think, I think this is about the time you will be delivering 15 new F-27 Stealth Raptors. For our military upgrade. <laughs> I like you, King Hussein. Ten is all I can spare at the moment. Let's see how this plays out. Just know I won't ever try anything underhand with you. I'm happy we understand each other. Dr. Samuel, thank you for meeting with me on such short notice. I'm going to jump right to the point. You've been working with our diplomacy office and are one of the most brilliant and well-respected experts on foreign affairs. I would like for you to work with me directly on matters involving foreign policy, including advising me on scenarios of war. Your Majesty, I am honored and utterly speechless you would select me for such an important role. I can't have you work with me and be speechless now, can I, Dr. Samuel? (laughs) (laughs) Of course not, sir. What would you like for me to address first? I want you to know a few things before we get started. First, I chose you for very specific reasons, and I will outline some of them for you. Then, you will understand why I chose you to address certain complexities of our foreign policy objectives. Out of the many incredible candidates considered... You are the deeply religious one, but you are also very open-minded about finding solutions that benefit multiple parties in a negotiation. I admire that immensely. Thank you, sir. I also believe your personality is just what my inner circle needs. Guts from a feminist perspective. Nationalism with an understanding of its implication to other nations and experience on the world stage in dealing with some of the most complicated countries on the face of the planet. I also believe you have never been courted or involved with the Monster Group. The Monster Group, sir? I'm not sure what that is. Exactly. But you know of them. You know they exist. Every time you try to negotiate a deal and parties suddenly pulled out without explanation, 
or every time a poor country was sent aid that mysteriously disappeared, you knew there were evil forces at work that robbed them the poor and unfortunate. They are the people that undermine the good work being done in the world. The nefarious group that pulls the string of world leaders and governments. The shadow governments, the men behind the curtain, the wicked secret societies who members find their way into roles of power and influence. Those monsters? Yes, those. You are not one of them. Sir... One of the reasons I even got into this line of work was to do whatever I could to stop them. They, whoever they are, they are hell-bent on destroying everything good and decent in this world. Ever since I was a little girl, I always knew something wasn't right in the world. And I have made it my personal mission to find the bad people and replace them with goodness. I know you do, Hannah. Can I call you Hannah? Yes, Of course, sir. You'll learn I call those I care about many names. It's my way of showing affection. Dr. Samuel, you will get your chance to replace them with goodness. Help me win. Help our country win. Help our people and all of humanity win. This is why I chose you. Because you can help us defeat them, those monsters. Can I count on you? Will I have your loyalty to the death? Yes, Your Majesty. I will be loyal to you to the death, and I will help you end those monsters. One more thing, Dr. Samuel. This promotion includes you becoming a member of the High Council. You will now be given the title of Lord of the House of Morale. There is much more we need to get you up to speed on. Thank you, sir. I am very humbled and honored. Good evening, America. There is breaking news coming from King Osiris' office tonight. King Osiris is said to have created two branches within his government that comprises what he calls the High Council. These two branches, which he calls Houses, are the House of Morale and the House of Terra. Each house contains four lords for a total of eight lords. Each lord is an overseer and commander of individual offices that govern the entire kingdom. Many Americans are very excited about the prospects of this announcement, but we are hearing mixed reactions from countries around the world. The eight lords have been named. They are as follows. From the House of Morale, Lord Quentin Capone, Lord Jeremy Oreb, Lord Hannah Samuel, Lord Joshua Jackson, and from the House of Terra, Lord Alberto Vargas, Lord Vanessa Banks, Lord Tracy Roberts, Lord Anna Patricia Shelley. I'm surprised to see you. After our last conversation, I thought my doubts about God made you hate me. I could never hate you, Abigail. I haven't come around because I've been pretty busy. Me too. Did you know I was named Captain? Yes, I'm very happy for you. You deserve it. I hope you are ready for the challenges ahead. You know I'm fearless, Silas. Oh, now that I've gotten to know you better... I have learned you are more than just adventurous. You have a relentless curiosity. I just hope that curiosity will be a valuable asset as you begin the biggest test of your military life. Seriously? I think you know exactly what those tests are. Why don't you tell me so I can prepare? There are so many things I wish I could tell you, Abigail. But I honestly can't. It would just be... upsetting. There are things I want to tell you too. Sometimes I think I should, just because I don't want to keep secrets from you. Well, just tell me and let's see what happens. Well, there are a couple of guys in my unit that have asked me out on dates. I think they like me in that way, but they criticize me, saying I am too involved with you. But you and I are only friends. We aren't like that, right? 
It's not like you're in love with me. Are you? Oh, wow. I, I get it. These other guys, they, they want you to release yourself from anything that guards your heart so they can be with you. That's all it is. You're not answering my question. Are you in love with me? Abigail. Listening to The Rise of King Asylus, Episode 7, On the Brink, starring J.V. Torres as King Asylus, Mark Rios as King Hussein, John Doby as Quentin Capone, Clarence Jackson as Joshua Jackson, Kathy Okawa as Dr. Hannah Samuel, Naomi Castillo as Abigail Sierra. Don Rosinski as newsreader and narrated by Sergei Brezhnikov. This episode features the song Hurricane by Kylie Nicole. Listen to Kylie Nicole on Spotify and iTunes today. Other music contributions by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com, Freesound.org, AirborneSound.com, and Audio Jungle. For more information about the cast, the music, and this production, please visit our website at www.theriseofkingasilas.com. And now a word from our friends, the audio drama, Stranger Lands. It's been a thousand years since the Celestial War, and the great races were rendered extinct. 
a thousand years since the establishment of the Decladine Empire, and peace came over Pylos. But an ancient secret that promises of untold power has broken the alliance and threatens to destroy the realm. Join our heroes, Tash. Grab Daryl. Get out. I will follow you. Go. Silverpaw. You pay for this, Sylvia. Craig. Someone is looking for you. The name Tash. And Bagger. Let's get dangerous. As they uncover dangerous secrets, ancient cities, and race against time and the Empire itself to save Pylos. Download The Stranger Lands now, before it's too late. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theater in Baltimore, Maryland. Copyright 2018. And stay tuned for Episode 8. Monday matinee on the Mutual Audio Network always means a potpourri of entertainment, drama, comedy, action. Whew, it really stimulates the mind, don't it? Well, a great way to get your mind back into neutral gear is to catch bells in the battery on Friday Follies and Sunday Showcase. Silliness is the best cure for mental stimulation. Bells in the battery. Always odd, always family-friendly. If only I could convince my family to listen to it. 